This is a video essay to Blizzard on why the recent affix changes they announced just yesterday are bad. In the past, I wouldn't have cared, but it's clear that Blizzard since the launch of Dragonflight, you have been listening to feedback, so I'm doing my best, desperately hoping you reconsider your recent M plus affix changes. You have one shot to make the war within a huge success when it launches in August. Mythic Plus is probably the biggest gameplay loop for your average WoW player. You have done so well in Dragonflight, which is a healing expansion. Please don't undo all your good work on a whim just because you're fixated on certain Mythic Plus affix principles. This video will be organized into neat main points, timestamps, and you can review it hopefully within the Blizzard team, and it gives concrete feedback on why the changes announced will not be well received by the WoW M Plus community. And I'll end the video with actual constructive suggestions and my proposal for how to fix the problem rather than just ranting about the problem. So let me just dive right into it. So regarding the new affix philosophy that you posted here, which is highlighted on screen, I think as a community, we need to recognize that what you're doing with your approach, the reason behind your approach, it's sound. And it's appreciated and we like that you're trying new stuff. Because if you just read what you're trying to do here, you want to shift the source of challenge to the dungeon, you want to simplify a fixed design, and keep in mind this phrase, we'll come back to that, you want to reduce visual noise, nameplate clutter, and cognitive load on players during M+. This is great. And these are all things that people have been complaining about. There's too many things to track in Mythic Plus. And we love this direction, but it contradicts with your changes later on you announced, and I'll explain why. And you want to allow for varied context-specific gameplay decisions. Now, along the same train of thought, you want to allow for different damage types each week, allow each specialization's additional opportunities to excel during the season. So you also recognize the meta is stale, you don't want it to be stale. And the TLDR of these bullet points are you want to allow people who play the non-meta specs, non-meta classes to be more easily selected for keys, and we appreciate that. So the intention so far is great, and it sounds wonderful. But here lies the problem. As we go into the two big things you announced, one is the new affixes over here, these four new affixes, and the second, the change to the current buckets of affixes, and we'll tackle them separately. The problem arises when we first look at the new affixes you introduced. Reckless, Thorn, Attune, Focused. Quick recap. For Reckless, non-boss enemies without mana ignores 20% armor with their attacks, so it does more damage to tanks, ignores their armor, but their armor is reduced by 30% and they take 10% increased arcane damage. Thorn, non-boss enemies without mana inflicts physical damage to their attackers when attacked, but takes 10% increased holy and shadow damage. Attuned, non-boss enemies with mana inflicts 20% increased damage, but takes 10% increased nature damage and 30% increased damage from bleed effects. Focused, non-boss enemies with mana have 30% increased taste, but takes 10% increased frost and fire damage. Let's take a pause here. This is clearly inspired by this kiss curse mechanic that the community, some of us have been suggesting. And it's great that you're listening. And we need to talk about the kiss and the curse component separately because there's different issues with both sides. But before we even go into that, before I dive into the nitty gritty details, just know that in the earlier part of your philosophy, you mentioned that you want to simplify a fixed design. And I can tell you just by reading these four affixes, when I'm trying to explain this to new players that is coming to Mythic Plus, it's going to be a challenge. Because just terms like non-boss enemies without mana, how am I supposed to explain that to a new player who is trying to join Mythic Plus? And I think that's your end goal. You want to make things a lot more new player friendly because that's only good for your game in the long run and I get it. And I'm trying to help you. But the thing is, even for veteran WoW players, we have to read the statements of these new four affixes twice in order to understand what's going on. Moreover, new players, it's overwhelming. And in my proposed solution later in this video, I'll talk about how to fix that issue. But just keep in mind that. So now let's move on to talk about the two components to the four affixes you just introduced. The curse component is where these enemies you face on different weeks, they deal varying amounts of damage to the party or to the tank and in different shapes of form. Some weeks they have bloodlust effects, the casters have 30% haste. Some weeks like Attune, the casters deal 20% more magical damage. Some weeks, every single enemy without mana reflects physical damage onto attackers. And then on certain weeks, they just ignore the tank's armor values. And that's why it's Curse. It poses a different challenge on a week-to-week -week basis. And then there's Kiss, where throughout your four affixes, on a weekly rotation, different types of specs and classes will deal more damage due to the buff that they get from the second half of each affix. 
So let's talk about the curse bit first and why it's bad. So let's focus on the first half of each of the affix. Now as a tank main, I can tell you this would discourage even more people to play tanks. And we already have a shortage of tank and healers and keys. Every single week, assuming these four affixes go live, I need to take the existing routes and modify them. Because on one week, I'm fighting casters with a bloodlust taste buff, and other weeks, these same casters will deal 20% more magical tank busters on me. And then there's some other weeks, this exact same pack of mobs will ignore my armor values as a tank, and I can't take as much physical swings. And then there's other weeks where I can't seem to chain the same group of mobs because all these mobs, they spell reflect physical damage onto anyone who does damage to them. It's already complicated enough, the cognitive load to quote you is already pretty overwhelming for a park tank. To manage the current routes is already a challenge for new players to Mythic Plus. On top of that, now they need to factor in all these different damage profiles, it's tricky. Then imagine a scenario. Let me paint you a scenario where your new rotation actually is in play. And I'm skipping a little ahead here regarding some of the affixes you chose to retain, but bear with me and we'll talk about that in greater detail later. Just imagine these affixes go live. There will be one week where you get fortified, you get raging, and you get focused, which is this fourth new affix. And your non-boss enemies have 30% increased haste. All your casters, they have bloodlust and they'll start casting with 30% more haste. On top of that, Imagine you're doing something like Ruby Life Pools. You beat the first boss, you're now dealing with all the mobs that just chain cast Cinder Bolts and they have Bloodlust on top of their current setup. Then, because it's raging, you have two casters in the pack and somehow the Evoker or the Druid have their Soothe on cooldown because they Soothe one of the mobs. The other caster suddenly gets raging, deals a lot more damage, and on top of that, has a haste buff that allows them to spam their cinder bolts even faster. In a park scenario where you already have problems with stops and coordinating interrupts because you don't have voice comms, this is a nightmare scenario. There is no counterplay because you can't crowd control them due to raging. Just imagine a week like that. I can already imagine there are people watching this video tuning out at the very thought of this three affix combo. That probably isn't fun. You just get deleted by this bloodlust empowered casters and there's no counterplay. Because remember, Blizzard, you are designing the Mythic Plus affixes for the majority of players. We are not talking about the people competing in TGP or competing in the MDIs because they are on voice comms and they can do perfect stops and that's great for them. But the majority of the player base that you're designing this for, there's no counterplay because they are not on voice comms and they are not coordinated. And guess what? On those weeks, they wouldn't feel like logging in to do keys. They would do the bare minimum, maybe at the start of the season where they're not geared yet. They would log in, do the bare minimum keys and log off. And guess what? When they're fully geared, they have no incentive to do the keys anymore. They would just log in maybe to do raids or even worse for your business, not even log in at all because Mythic Plus is just frustrating. On those weeks, why should they pay a monthly sub where specific weeks like that, they just don't want to play the game. It's bad for business. Now I get that the curse component of these new curse affixes is meant to get your healers, your DPS and your tanks to have different talent setups, different trinket setups to adapt to the challenge. And that's what you mentioned in your affix philosophy. But I can guarantee you this is not where the fun of Mythic Plus comes from. Nobody will think and say that, oh man, that Mythic Plus session we did yesterday, that was sick. Did you see me do that clutch talent pick where I had a minus 20 seconds on my interrupt? That saved the entire run. And neither will people say, oh dude, did you see I equipped the ward trinket or shield trinket before the dungeon and that allowed us to conquer that affix and it felt good. Nobody thinks like that. Nobody thinks about their enjoyment of Mythic Plus in those terms. The fun of Mythic Plus lies in the dynamic challenge of being able to execute your rotation, feeling good about putting up numbers you're supposed to put without dealing with bullshit external factors. And I'll get to that later on when we talk about my proposed solution. But again, I get your philosophy, but I'm just saying it doesn't translate into player enjoyment. And because nobody says those things I mentioned, there's no need to introduce artificial reasons why people need to vary their talent setups or their trinket setups. Because guess what? As the key starts scaling naturally, as they get higher and higher level without any affixes, because of infinite scaling, eventually the players will also need to adapt their talent setup based on the pulls they need to do and what they need to do to survive. That customization that you want them to do, the picking of different talents, that will come naturally. But we'll talk more about that later. But look, as part of this curse that you introduce in this four fixes, I also can guess that maybe you want to vary up the tank meta. 
you want different tanks to excel on different weeks. For example, the week where you have more casters dealing more magical damage. Okay, maybe Vengeance Demon Hunters and Blood Decays will fare better because they're better at mitigating magical damage. But you know what's gonna happen? As of now, if you have all these four Evixers go live, the best tank will still be the tank with the most amount of stops the tank that can facilitate the biggest pool possible in Mythic Plus. And that is why Vengeance Demon Hunters will continue to be king, regardless of whether it's the week where they have less armor, whether it's the week where mobs reflect physical damage, it doesn't matter because the tanks will always go back to who can facilitate the biggest pool possible in Mythic Plus. And let me paint you another scenario. Imagine it's focused week. Now you play a Brewmaster, and aside from your AoE stun, you have no real way of doing AoE stops and you are doing ruby life pools where there's a shit ton of casters. Versus your cousin Timmy who plays Vengeance Demon Hunter. And he has two AoE silence sigils. And the dude is simply chilling by blanket silencing the mobs one after another, maybe even watching Netflix on a second monitor while you as a brewmaster are just sweating, hoping that someone kicks the next cinder bolt. Or the alternative is, your brewmaster just sits in Valdraken and pray that someone takes you on their weekly key. You kind of get the point now regarding the curse. And that's only one half of the issue with the new affixes. Let's move on to the kiss part of the new affixes. Now, it's clear to me what you're trying to do with this rotation of new affixes. The kiss bit, where certain damage profiles are amplified on a week-to-week -week basis. You are really trying to encourage people to take new specs and new classes so that every week the meta is fresh and is not stale and it changes. Again, the intention is good, but this is not the way to go about it and let me explain why. Firstly, the meta comp or call it the god comp or whatever you want to call it, it's always trickled down from the very top. The world first keys will have a certain comp and these people, they'll stream their keys or they'll upload their YouTube videos and the rest of the Mythic Plus population will copy their keys, and the rest of the Mythic Plus population will copy their routes, their team composition, even down to all the pools they will do and what they do to facilitate those pools, what skips, what crowd controls. In certain strats, you need very specific classes to execute. For example, the Evoker's Dreamwalk on certain mobs, the Priest Mind Soothe on things like Brackenheight where you can skip the cages, but you get the point. You can have the tightest class balancing ever, and even in a scenario where you balance it really well, there will still be a certain meta, a god com will still emerge. And this is something we need to accept. In a world where the internet is a thing for video games, the meta will always prevail. There is nothing you can do artificially on your end to disrupt the meta in a way like that. Because guess what? Even on a week by week basis, let's say you buff the damage profiles of your kiss part by 50%. Guess what? That week, there will still be a meta. There will be a meta that emerges for that specific week. So if your intention is to disrupt the meta, it's kind of a moot point because once the meta comp is locked in, even the top teams wouldn't vary their specs or their setups on a week-to-week -week basis just to try and pick up the additional percentage of the damage buff because they are already used to certain routes, certain strats, who should CC which mob and at which point I would have this cooldown. I just don't see that happening. The meta would stay the same. Moving on to the next point. Speaking about the damage buff, if you read the two tips for all these four new affixes, it might read plus 10% damage to certain types of damage types, but in reality, 10% translates to maybe 3% damage overall. That's an overall bar for certain specs because of bosses and not all the mobs being affected by this new affix. And also the damage types are pretty narrow, so not all of your spells will contribute to these boosted damage types. So if we call it 3%, that's not a real game changer to spice up the meta at all. In fact, there might be undesired downsides here. Imagine you play a Pharaoh Druid where there's a week where bleeds are suddenly buffed. So now we're talking about a tune, right? Where bleeds do 30% more damage. And man, this week you're stomping in keys, everybody wants you in keys, everybody's inviting you. And then the next three weeks roll around, and suddenly you go from seriously good DPS to just mediocre and second rated, a low priority pick. That probably doesn't feel very good, as you AFK in Veldraken. That might even result in more player churning. Now then imagine you play a Havoc Demon Hunter, suddenly you have a way bigger advantage than other specs. Because not only do you bring Chaos Brand, which is a flat baseline plus 5% to your magical damage in your party, but you also double dip across all these four affixes because you amplify the damage profiles for all these spell damage via your Chaos Brand. So you're the only spec well, aside from Vengeance Demon Hunter, that double dips into these affix bonuses. How is that fair and how does that promote 
kind of spec diversity going forward. It's probably not very aligned with what you intended in your philosophy, which is again, well-intentioned. We are very clear about that. Take another example. Let's say you play a mage. Now on reckless weeks, maybe arcane spec pulls ahead because you can do 10% more arcane damage. And then three weeks later, on the focus week, you might want to play frost spec or fire spec because you have a 10% buff if you play that spec. Okay, then that's great. As a mage, you have two out of four weeks where you get a damage buff. Great. Now imagine Timmy, your friend, plays a rogue and he really only benefits from one out of the four weeks from this additional bleed damage. Then the question is, where do you draw the line? Doesn't this new affixes benefit certain classes more than the other? And if the affixes were intended to promote class diversity and spec diversity, isn't this working against that principle? Look, at the end of the day, like I said, there will be a god comp that always trickles down. And as of how it is right now, two slots are already unlocked. Augmentation Evoker will never go away from the Mythic Plus meta just due to how much utility, buffs, additional survivability it brings. That is one slot that will not change. And if you need proof, just look at the Mythic Stats website that crawls all these data of the Mythic Plus spec representation. And let me zoom out a little here. You don't need to know the math behind this, but all you need to see is in the color code over here, green represents that it's more healthy, meaning there's more diversity in terms of representation. Red means that there is very little representation in terms of spec diversity. And you can see for season four and season three for tanks, they're always red because why? Vengeance Demon Hunters are always dominating. Let's scroll back to before Augmentation Evoker was introduced. Just look at the gulf in diversity. Halfway through season two of Dragonflight when Augmentation Evoker was introduced, suddenly you see this huge amount of red that appears. Suddenly you see this distribution of specs suddenly shift from having so many colors across the three DPS slots, suddenly is flooded with a sea of green and Augmentation Evoker is here to stay. The point I'm trying to make here is simple. Spec diversity, you are trying to solve the underlying problem, which is the lack of spec diversity. But we are probably trying to solve it in the wrong way because spec diversity also depends on things like the presence of a support role like Augmentation Evoker. It's like you have a flu and you have no cough, but I'm giving you cough syrups just to make you feel better. If we are serious about addressing spec diversity, we really need to relook at Augmentation Evoker. What exactly is the role of Augmentation Evoker? Do we really need a support role in this game? And yes, I know you already put in development effort for Augmentation Evoker, I get that. Maybe look at what it brings to the table. Because right now, there's absolutely no way they're going away in season one of The War Within as it is. But coming back to your new four fixes. As I said, one slot is already unlocked out of the three DPS for Augmentation Evoker. Then you have your tank spot that is also unlocked because depending on which tank is the best at facilitating giga massive AOE pulls, whether it's because they are immortals like prop warriors in season one, or whether they are like Vengeance Demon Hunters in season three and four where they have insane control, there will be a meta tank and it wouldn't vary from week to week just because you introduce a curse component to your affixes. Then you have your healer spot, which is probably on lock two because they're not affected by any of the new affixes anyway. So it probably will just be a healer spec that rounds up the god comm by bringing the right buffs and utility. Basically druids and mark of the wild in the current meta right now, which really then leaves you with two open DPS spots. And here I'm making the assumption that Heaven Demon Hunters are not meta because let's say Vengeance Demon Hunters are the preferred tank. But in a world where Vengeance isn't the preferred tank, then suddenly your Heaven Demon Hunter is filling that DPS role because it double dips through Chaos Brand on three different affixes that you just introduced. So three out of the four weeks, it's advantageous to bring a Heaven Demon Hunter because it further amplifies the magical damage component that is already boosted by the affixes. Now the worst case scenario here, then you're left with only one real DPS spot that varies. And this is the only spot that will change on a week to week basis. And this is why spec diversity cannot be achieved by forcing affixes upon the community like that. Because for as long as Mythic Plus is a competitive mode, there will always be a public perception of what is meta, what is a god comp, and people in parks will always be more inclined to take more meta specs, regardless of whether they need it or not. Whether it's a plus two, plus five, plus six, plus 10, plus 20, it doesn't matter. As much as I love the Puck community to be open-minded and say, hey, just for my weekly key, it doesn't matter what I take. And it's, that's true, by the way. People don't think like that. It is just what it is, and we just need to accept that. And maybe your intention was just to give the Puck leaders a nudge to encourage them to take certain specs on certain weeks so they get representation, or to make the key leaders more open-minded in taking all these non-meta specs. But herein lies a big problem. If that is the exact reason why someone would take my Ellie Sham 
or my survival hunter as a pity into keys, I personally would feel really shitty about it because I have no player agency. I got into the key because it's the right time at the calendar because this week it happened to be my lucky day. It's got nothing to do with my personal ability to play the spec. There is nothing that talks about the mastery of the spec from my individual perspective. It all comes down to an in-game calendar. We play MMORPGs for personal fulfillment. And I don't see that fulfillment coming through in any way if it's predetermined by a calendar. But also just trying to be empathetic to why you potentially thought of all these affixes. Maybe you wanted to get more people to play alts because the war within is all about alts. And we love the warband concept. Don't get me wrong. You got the biggest cheers at BlizzCon for the warband concept. We love it. I love to play alts and I can tell you it will be popular. Maybe you want to encourage people to swap from week to week playing different classes to capitalize on, you know, the added kiss advantage when it comes to the new affixes. But you know what? That's unnecessary. You already got such a great reception at BlizzCon with regards to warbands. We love it. There's no need to create this additional artificial incentive for people to play alts. People will do so regardless. It's fun. And so with all of that said, that rounds up only half of my arguments regarding the new affixes you introduced. Now let's move on to talking about the older affixes where I feel like you've also misjudged how people think about them. So just to recap what you talked about, with our four new affixes, those four are supposed to replace the current plus four affix bucket. And the following affixes will be deleted, basically for season one. Afflicted, incorporeal, these two, I think people are cool with it because they're just certain classes like warriors who you just feel bad. You, you don't bring anything to solve these affix and guess what? You've always been Veldraken most of the time waiting for a key to take you in. But removing things like entangling and volcanic, I'm not sure about that. Storming, good riddance. It's not the most fun affix, especially if you're tank or melee. But herein lies the interesting bit. Entangling and volcanic is probably the most popular affix in the Mythic Blast community, and you can probably guess why. The reason why they are the favorite affixes is because they have the least amount of impact in the Mythic Plus gameplay and dungeon mechanics. Blizzard, that should already give you a massive hint of how you should think of affixes. People at the moment don't see affixes as fun. They see them as a chore or inconvenience, and that's why the affixes that we like are the ones that have the least impact on gameplay, volcanic and entangling, where you simply just move out of the zone. And that's not the worst part yet. The worst part of this announcement comes in this bit. To match the number of affixes in our level 4 affix bucket and align our affix goals in the world within, we will be retiring spiteful affix for season 1 of the world within. That's fine so far. The plus 7 affix bucket includes the following. Raging, bolstering, bursting, sanguine. Basically, the decision to keep sanguine, bolstering, raging is something that I cannot understand for the life of me. And it's frustrating, honestly. Because you have shown the guts to say, I want to be able to remove affixes that we use in the past, and that's great. You've shown the guts to remove these, right? Afflicted, incorporeal, storming. These are things that people don't like. You have the guts to remove them. But yet, you decide to keep probably the most hated three affixes, even more so than Afflicted, Incorporal, and Storming. You choose to keep Raging, Bolstering, and Sanguine. I just can't understand. And you probably have data to know that they are the most hated affixes. You can probably pull up the number of keys completed during those weeks. And I can guarantee you, you will see a dip in the people who are interested to do key completions in those weeks. And even if you don't want to pull up the stats, just read Reddit, Twitter, Wowhead, you see an overwhelming amount of people complaining about why these affixes exist. Because if you read your philosophy here, and I quote, our overarching goal is to minimize the mechanical overlap between affixes and dungeon trash design. Also to reduce visual noise, nameplate clutter, and cognitive load, and shift the source of challenge to the dungeon itself. It's almost like the person who wrote this announcement post is different from the person who decided to make all these affix changes. Because guess what? Sanguine, bolstering, and raging, these three are probably the most overwhelming influential affixes on dungeon mechanics and trash. Sanguine, when a mini boss RPs and emotes and bathes in sanguine to heal to full health, that is not fun because there's nothing you can do. And you can say, well, you could have moved the mob way earlier ahead of time. But then that's taking away fun from other people because, well, my DPS loves to AOE see big numbers and cleave, but I have to move them early just because of the affix. Then there's bolstering, where your tank 
needs to play Kite Simulator towards the second half of the pool, while your other four party members desperately flings crowd controls to keep the mob away from the tank, instead of pressing their big buttons and seeing big numbers pop up on screen, which is what they enjoy because they play a DPS. Or you have Raging, where you pray that your Evoker or Druid knows which mob to soothe, or pray that your Evoker will know the right time to AoE soothe. Which, by the way, doesn't help with class representation or spec representation, because there's really only one class out there that can do AoE soothes. And you also need to pray that your DPS is smart enough to switch target and focus on certain mobs. And you know what? Everything I just described, it adds on to cognitive load and it adds on to the need to track nameplates. You actually need to eyeball in bolstering weeks which mob has the most health and you swap to that. On sanguine weeks, you need to see which mob is dying and you need to react accordingly. In addition to the 101 clutter on screen that you're trying to reduce in Mythic Plus that people are complaining is overwhelming in Mythic Plus for Dragonflight, there's a lot of mechanics going on. And then for Raging, you need to track the percentage of the mob so that you know you can soothe at the right time or you can mitigate at the right time. If not, you just get one shot because of Raging and because you can't crowd control them. And also on top of that, like I mentioned, your new affixes allow some of them to have Bloodlust and cast way frequently. Like, how is that fun? These three affixes, Raging, Bolstering, Sanguine is terrible and I urge you to remove them. There's a reason why every Mythic Plus season, people wait for Volcanic Week, they wait for Bursting Week to push keys. And they're most excited about those weeks. There's a reason for that. It's because the other weeks where we're dealing with Raging, Bolstering and Sanguine, it's just not great. And then you have a last mention about Tyrannical and Fortified, which brings me to my next section. I have basically talked about why your current affixes the brand new four affixes with a curse and a kiss component, as well as the decision to retain and remove certain affixes, why they don't work, I've addressed that. But like I said, this is not a rant video. This is a video where I hope and I implore, and I really wish Blizzard that you listen because this would pretty much decide the fate of Mythic Plus when it comes to the War Within, and we love the game mode. Make no mistake about it. I love the game mode and I want to see it succeed. And this is what I'm proposing for the Mythic Plus affix system. Dragonflight has set you up so well. It's a healing expansion. And you're launching the war within in August. So let's act swiftly. And let's make this expansion a great one for everyone. Firstly, let me just say that I think you might be too fixated on the concept of affixes that changes on a week-to-week -week basis for Mythic Plus. You're looking at the problem wrongly. You're thinking you always need to have affixes. What if you simply just remove the concept of affixes? All you do is just have the keystone scale at a level of, let's say, plus 10% at every key level for mobs and bosses. And maybe you can have varying scalings for bosses and mobs. That's up to you. I'm telling you, people play Mythic Plus because we like the idea of being in the zone, being in a flow state, pushing all your buttons, blowing things up, gathering big pulls, and topping up health bars. Nobody ever thinks of Mythic Plus as, oh god, that was so fun. We conquered storming this week. I dodged all the cyclones in my screen. And did you see that sick death grip I did on that mob before it soaked in sanguine? Nobody thinks about Mythic Plus like that in terms of fun. When you tell people to recall why is Mythic Plus fun, nobody thinks about all those things. I get that you want difficulty in Mythic Plus, you want a challenge, and that's rightly so. Every video game should have some form of challenge. If not, it's pointless. But that is precisely why you have that flat percentage increment in each keystone level going higher and higher. It's infinite scaling. Eventually, it gets to a point where it's punishing enough where the boats one shot, where the tank busters one shot. Let that naturally be the difficulty for us to conquer as players. There's no need for a weekly rotating artificial difficulty. To quote you, you want to shift the source of the challenge to the dungeon itself. Remove the affixes and I think people will love Mythic Plus even more. Because what we love about Mythic Plus is the infinite scaling component. Not so much which bullshit I have to deal with when I log in on reset week. And okay, if you find this approach a bit too bold, a bit too radical, I have another working middle ground for you. Have weekly rotating affixes, but have none of them that is negative in consequences. For instance, you create affixes that only helps players time a key, that makes the dungeon easier, rather than affixes that goes let me see what bullshit I have to deal with this week. Let me see what could potentially break my key this week. For instance, you can have a affix where the first minute of a boss fight when you pull the boss, it gives you 15% haste buff. Something simple like that. It allows you and incentivizes you to pull more mobs onto the boss. That's fun. Or it could be as simple as, let's say, an old affix like the Awaken affix from BFA the last season. 
where it's essentially a free shroud that you let people use from time to time in a dungeon. Or maybe it's like, oh, you reach a touch point, you get plus 10% damage boost. It's as simple as that. There's no need to be big brain or omega 5000 IQ and cook up some very complicated affix at the end of the day. Simplicity is king. Point is, drop the fixation with affixes having to be so complicated. That requires me to read the affix twice before I can even explain it to newcomers and I've been playing Mythic Plus for a long time now. Keep it simple. Save the development resources. The developmental resources that you save, focus that on the tighter week-to-week -week Mythic Plus tuning. Focus on dungeon tuning. Focus on class and spec tuning. Similar to what you did in Season 1 of Dragonflight, which I think was a great job. And look, the community responds well to it as well. Just look at, again, the Mythic Plus diversity in Season 1 of Dragonflight. This is Season 1, and this is before Augmentation Evokers were introduced. The spec diversity, to me, this is one of the peak M Plus experience in Dragonflight. I really enjoyed Season 1 and halfway through Season 2 before Augmentation Evokers came in. Again, remember, there will always be a meta comp, regardless of how well balanced things are. But, but in the spectrum of metas, there's also something that looks like this versus something that looks like this. So why not focus your development efforts on making sure we get something like this, this kind of representation. By having less affixes to balance, to deal with, to develop, focus your development efforts on tight tunings, week-to-week -week dungeon tunings, week-to-week -week class tunings or spec tunings. That will go a long way. Now, in your post, you also said you're reviewing Tyrannical versus Fortified. And I can tell you, Nobody will be upset if you remove Tyrannical. Nobody. Look, Mythic Plus is fun because it's dynamic. The idea of reacting and making decisions of what buttons to press based on the evolving number of mobs that are still alive or on which part of the route you currently are on. And the thing about dungeon bosses is that they are not designed to be some 5000 IQ mechanic like raid bosses. So on Tyrannical Weeks, you sometimes have these bosses on high keys that loops their mechanics like 4 to 5 minutes in a row. And not only is it boring to play, it's pretty boring to watch during your M Plus tournaments as well, like TGP or MDIs. Get rid of Tyrannical, the world will be a way better place. Last few comments. The time to make such a controversial change, like keeping Sanguine bolstering and raging while throwing away things that people love like Volcanic and Tangling, controversial changes like that, probably not for season one of a new expansion where you have the most amount of people coming back to the expansion. If we wanted to test a controversial change like that, like the Kiss and Curse affix, we are fine, but maybe that could have been done for season four of Dragonflight. And if they did that, everyone would be like, okay, this is a testing season. But I feel like season one, The War Within has so much stakes. You had so much hype from BlizzCon. You had so much goodwill you built up over Dragonflight. Do not throw it away just because you want to test something that is untested, that the community is now reacting strongly against. The other thing to consider, and since we're talking about how to improve Mythic Plus, I get that you want there to be stakes. You want keys to break as a form of weight to each key we do, and that's totally fine. We need stakes in video games to give what we do weight and purpose. But one of the reasons why Mythic Plus in Parks is such a high tension environment is because there's too much on the line. And it goes back to the punishment when keys break. Now, I'm not saying we do not let the keys break anymore. I'm not saying that. One way we can improve this is by letting keys break. But maybe at certain key levels, you have two shots of timing the key before it breaks. Or maybe at a certain level onwards, when you're pushing for the 0.01% title, then it starts to downgrade when you fail to time it. Like for example, arbitrarily, it starts breaking only from a plus 10 onwards. Something like that. I'm not saying that's the right solution. I'm saying that direction of problem solving might help. And even if you think all my ideas are dumb and I do not know what I'm talking because I'm not in game development, that's really okay too because all I really just want to request is you relook. Just make one change. If there's only one change you can do from this entire announcement, it will be to remove all the plus 7 affixes, raging, bolstering, sanguine. Things that people don't like and you know we don't like it. Remove them. Keep your current affixes. Entangling, storming, volcanic. Hell, you can even keep afflicted and incorp. I think everyone will say those are at least better than sanguine bolstering and raging. This one change, even if you disregard everything I said in this video, this single change will be the most impactful change you can announce next week when you make your new beta announcement. To any Blizzard folks who might be watching, we know you've been keeping close tabs on community feedback, and we know that from the alpha that we've been part of, you have been very forthcoming in asking us to voice our opinions, and we appreciate it, we really do. This video is really meant to be just constructive feedback. I hope you consider the arguments made. Mythic Plus is an amazing game mode. 
I have never found an enjoyment in a video game or MMORPG that is like Mythic Plus. And it can really be the core pillar of what makes The War Within one of the best modern WoW retail expansions. All it takes for you to do is not to be too fixated on your current approach and principles, and act fast before The War Within actually launches in less than 2 months away. A shout out to all the Patreon subscribers on this channel who makes the content on this channel possible. You're the real MVP if you'd like to support our content. Link to Patreon in the description. And if you like my coverage on Mythic Plus going to the War Within, make sure to subscribe. More Mythic Plus content coming your way. Because I know, regardless of Blizzard's final decision, I will still play Mythic Plus. It's just how fast I get annoyed by certain affixes. But at the end of the day, there's no substitute for Mythic Plus. But Blizzard, that's not an excuse not to make changes. Hopefully you reconsider your approach. Let's make War Within a huge success.